So about four months ago, I teased a new PCB board, the Scato 69. It was built as a commission for one of my friends, and it is kind of a little bit different from what I would normally use for a board because it was designed for someone else. But I'm finally going to build my copy of the board today. I may or may not release this on my website as a board you can purchase. I haven't decided on that yet. If there is interest, let me know down below. But before we do jump into this, I do want to give a quick shout out to my sponsor for this video. As per usual, my PCB boards, of course, JLC PCB. They're who I personally use for like the past two years or so to order like 30 or 40 different orders of PCBs. They have really affordable prices really good quality and there will be coupons in the description so you can get like a percentage off your order if you want to order some PCB them. so highly recommend them but with that let's jump in and we'll get started so this here is the scato 69 it is called the scato 69 as per usual because it has 69 total keys i don't remember if i did that counting the left one over here because it's actually an optional encoder so it might be 68 without that but technically that is a button so it's 69 keys or 69 holes on this board here but with that what we have here is a simple 4x12 ortho linear layout in the middle we have our macro keys and the optional encoder over here and then on the right we have the most disgusting part of this build is the the number pad here which um i hate number pads if you're not a long time viewer of mine you would probably not know that but i basically use home row numbers so like i sit here and i hold my right thumb and then i get one through nine and zero on home row so i don't really have to like use a number pad but a lot of people like number pads so uh that's why this has a number pad as the person that I originally built this for wanted a number pad over there. Now with that though, what I want to actually do is just kind of break down the case here and show you the design choices I made for it and kind of give you some ideas for it. We'll take a look at the PCB after that, but basically all we have here is we have this little top bezel part, and this is a design I've kind of done with a few different boards, but basically we have this top bezel here, which is a very thin piece of plastic with some heat set inserts in there. If we can kind of focus on those, which I did do off camera just to make my life easier here. So that will basically screw down to the plate here, which we have a plate in the middle. This is 1.5 millimeters thick, where normally on like a hand wire board, I do a three millimeter. We don't have to do that here because this is a PCB, which will be doing most of the support. So this could be a typical one and a half millimeter thickness and it'll be fine, but that's just a plate there, which will just kind of stack on top of that. The screws will go through into those heat sets. And then finally, I'll pop out this PCB for a moment here we will have the screws just go through the back here. So they go through there and just kind of sandwich that all together. I believe this is called a sandwich design. I believe that's what it's called. But yeah, the other thing you're probably noticing at this point is first off the filament color I use for this. I really like it's like this, it's Amelin PLA, it's a brick. So it has like this black texture in it, which kind of looks really, really nice. I thought um, like that little black speckle looks really nice there. But what you're probably noticing more is this like back part here, which was a design decision that was kind of like made last on it when I was talking to my buddy when I was designing it for him, is that he wanted a little bit of tilting to it. So like if you put this down, I mean, you won't be able to see from that angle, but if I point it here, that's giving about seven degrees of tilt there. But the cool thing is that we can actually just pop that off. So that comes right off like that. And we have these little like holes on it that kind of match up to the feet there. So this will align right. And it's just magnets that just snap it right on. Uh, so you can kind of get an optional seven degree tilt if you want, or you take it off and just kind of get a perfectly flat thing there. Now, uh, these magnets, you can kind of see them in there. They're pretty thick, but it doesn't interfere with anything. Um, no standoffs on this, which actually, if we start like to flip over to PCB now, you can see that when I designed this, I actually kind of designed it with standoffs in mind, thinking that there wouldn't be enough support because you could see the PCB is a little bit flexible as PCBs typically are, but I didn't actually need those. I found that once you mount this to the plate over here, the design around the edge here kind of gives it enough support that you don't really need any standoffs. So there are no standoffs in there. Um, this will kind of just sit perfectly in there the way you'd expect. Now, the final thing I want to talk about at this point is just this here, which is the PCB, of course. Um, you can see that I have my stabilizers on here, which are lubed and uh, wholly modded. I did that off camera before this just to kind of make my life a little easier. These are Duroc V3s, which are pretty okay. They feel pretty good. They don't have much rattle on. They're pretty fine on this. But if we look at this and just kind of flip it over, you can see that we have all our diodes actually soldered on this already because this was assembled by JLC. And then we do have our STM32 module. So these are, there's a video on my channel if you wanna see how these are like working because these are released free on the repo if you wanna design with these. But basically that is our entire controller on there just built into the PCB, USB-C of course up top. On the left here, we do have the Scott O'Keefe, Scott 69 PCB edition V1.0. Then if we look on the right, I kind of labeled this 831 2024 when I actually ordered it. That's kind of something I do where I like label them so I know when I made them, but exactly four months ago is when I designed this. So kind of been slacking on this build, but what I want to do first on this, actually before that, we can talk about this as the uh, encoder over here. Um, so you can put an encoder in here and then also has the combo pads where you could put a switch because basically an encoder is just a switch anyway, but it just has those extra pins for the uh, rotary part of it. 
but you can put a switch in there or an encoder. I'm probably going to put the encoder in it because it is it needs to be soldered regardless. Um, I am going to also hot swap everything because I didn't get the sockets from the factory. A common thing is that sockets are typically out of stock a lot of the time from the parts library in a lot of places. So this was the case with this, so I didn't get those assembled. So that's the only thing we really have to assemble on this is just the sockets, which also another thing with that, if we actually look closer, I kind of use my sockets here where I design them in such a way that you can... Uh, just kind of solder directly to it, which is what I did on the original version of this board. But on my version, I'm going to actually put the hot swaps on so I can hot swap it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to go through and I'm going to solder all the sockets on. And that's pretty much all there is to this build. After that, we'll be able to just pop in some switches and we'll be able to type on it. So there's really the only part I had to do to this actual build completely done. All the sockets are on the board now. And the one concern I had while doing that actually is if I grab the bottom half of the case over here, you can see these magnets, they kind of like stick out there. And my concern was that if we take the PCB and put it in there, that the sockets might have hit that. Because in the first version of this, I didn't actually use sockets, so I didn't have to worry about that. But if we look at the USB port, you can see that it is down low enough. So when it mounts with the plate, it will be perfectly fine. But what I want to do now at this point is I want to just talk again about the little encoder over here. And I've decided that for this, I'm not going to do the encoder because I don't really have a use for them. It was just something that my buddy wanted on his board. So I added the option there to actually have it, which we could add the encoder. But what I'm going to do is just solder the switch on. And the way I did this is a little bit weird is that I have to basically put all the switches into the board and then I solder this one on because I didn't do like a hot swap on it. So what we're going to be using for this actually is if I grab them over here, we have these Leo Bog uh, V4, I think. And actually it's what I have my sockets in. So they're the Leo Bog V4s here. You can see 30 gram minimum, 40 gram actuation. Probably it's all in like Chinese. So I don't know exactly what it says, but those are the specs for these switches. They were like super cheap. I think they're like $16 for 110 of them. Um, they are a linear switch. I don't know if you can really hear that it has like RGB on it if you had RGB on this. So I'm just going to go through. I'm going to pop those into the plate, pop them onto the board, and then we can start assembling it. And that's really all there is to this build. So I'm going to go through and pop these switches on now. So there are all the switches in the board. And you probably saw during that time lapse that the first thing I messed up on is that this bottom switch here, which will be zero on the numpad. I ripped the pad off that because I actually overflowed the socket. So if I grab this, you can see I ripped the pad off because I was just getting too aggressive trying to like pull it off. So just soldered that one in directly. I'm um, totally my fault there. And then also in this middle row here, I didn't solder the other half. So I had to go through and resolder that. And then of course I did actually solder on the final switch over here so that I have the full macro pad switches, but everything's in now. And you probably also saw during that, that I like to make my life a little bit more difficult. I should print myself a plate fork because you saw that I was like using my switch puller here to kind of like pull the plate and stuff. It'd be so much easier if I just had a switch fork. So I should probably do that eventually. Maybe the next build I do. Um, I'll just procrastinate until I never do it, but this is all ready to go now. I didn't test the firmware on it yet. I didn't test the switches. So I'll probably have to swap some out if I bend some pins on them, but um, I'll do that after I get the keycaps on, which what I want to show you is the keycap. So if I grab over here, I have this baggie of keycaps that are kind of color matched to it. These are my flat keycaps that are available on the repo for free if you want to download and print them yourself. But those are on there. Um, I'm going to just pop those onto the board now and then I can assemble it afterwards. I might either do that all in one time lapse. Um, actually, yeah, I'm going to do that all in one time lapse. I'm going to pop the keycaps on. I'm going to assemble it and then we'll have a fully working board and then we can do a typing test because I think these are going to sound pretty good. These are. Uh, they are like pre-lubed. I got like grease all over my fingers from them. Like I can feel it. Um, actually, let me pop one open really quick. So if I grab my little switch opener here, I think they're pre-lubed. I just want to confirm that. So if I grab this and pop that open, we can see that there is some grease on there, which is pretty nice considering that I paid like $16 for these switches. So um, is it a good lube job? I don't know, but they kind of feel pretty good like this. So we'll see. I'm going to go through now. I'm going to just assemble everything and then we can do a typing test. So there is the fully assembled board. If we look on the edge, you can see that it has that nice like little stripe in the middle, which I think looks really nice. I really do love the color of this filament. Also this like amylin black, what is it, brick? It's, it looks really nice, especially on the back here. Uh, this keycap keeps falling off, which is an issue I sometimes have with my 3D printed keycaps. And the solution to that is just a little piece of tape, which I will do, but I'm not too concerned about that right now. I'll just let it keep just popping off for now. But if we flip this over, the last thing is yet again, this does have this cool magnetic little like bar here that we could take and just kind of snap on like that. 
to give us a little bit of a elevation on the typing angle. Now, I don't know if I'm a big fan of that. I typically use my boards pretty flat, but it does have that option, which is kind of nice that we can kind of do that. Of course, at this point now, the final thing for this video is we have to do a typing test on this, which it does feel pretty good. I do actually like these Leo Bog switches. They feel really nice. And if I kind of like, you can maybe get a little idea there, but the best way to do that, of course, is do a typing test. So we're gonna jump in, do a typing test, and we'll see how it actually sounds. So yeah, that's the build of the Scato 69. I think it came out really good. I really like how these switches feel and sound actually. The only issue is as per typical with these flat keycaps here that they're kind of a little jarring when you first switch back to them from using like a scoop profile. You kind of lose your track of where you are on the board, but you do get used to them after you use them a little while. So that uh, probably showed a little bit in that typing test. I only got like 103 words per minute, which is uh, a little bit slower than I normally am. But I do like how it looks. I don't think I'm a big fan, like I said, of this angle. So I'm probably gonna just use it like that. But other than that, the board looks great. Yet again, I will mention this video was sponsored by JLC PCB, which is kind of an excuse to try PCB stuff out. So yeah, like this one here is another PCB board, which I haven't even decided if I'm going to sell in the shop or not, because um, it is a little bit expensive to kind of manufacture them and stock them if people aren't interested. So let me know if you are interested in this. I do have a few available. If you want to like message me on Discord, I, we could probably hook something up if you want one of them. But that is the Scato 69 with the completely useless numpad over here that I will never use. But because I like to build all the boards I ever designed, I have one of these with the numpad and the four by 12 that I probably won't use too much but yeah that's the board it looks really nice yet again I love this filament color on it and a thing I want to mention actually is this port up here you probably notice how the USB-C in there is kind of smaller um, I make the case design a little bit bigger so you can kind of get really any cable in there because a lot of them have like this fatter part on them um, so that kind of solves that and then also if I plug this fully in it kind of protects against like if you were to hit this it kind of has like some like stuff there protecting it so you're not going to yank the cable out which is nice but that's the board there. I think it looks really cool. Um, I'm not gonna use it with that little part on the back there. I'm gonna use it mostly flat because I like that. But other than that, as per usual, comment, rate, subscribe, and I will see you guys next time.